Welcome and thank you for joining us today for our mini session on why it's important or what the value is to getting your kids moving, getting them up and off their hind ends and getting them busy and active. And so um, my name is Judy. I am Sunlight's marketing sales coordinator. So I get the opportunity to um, work with our wonderful teams who go to conventions when there are conventions. Um, I'm also a retired homeschool mom of three amazing adults and now have grandchildren who are using Sunlight Curriculum as well. So um, we're a Sunlight Saturated family. Um, with me today is Jen. How are you today, Jen? Good, thank you. Um, I'm Jen Price. I am a veteran homeschool mom. I have two graduated, but I still have two to go, um, a sixth grader and a 10th grader. And we have used Sunlight for 19 years. Um, and so we are not quite as saturated as you, but we're pretty into it. Pretty close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get right into our subject here. So why do we think it's important to get kids moving? What's the value or the benefit? What would you say? Well, kids are made to move. Kids mm -hmm. are designed and, and made to be curious and be moving and be climbing and be testing themselves and using their little bodies to grow all the skills they need to develop and mature. And so to sit a kid at a desk and tell them not to move, but pay attention and listen and use your brain, but don't move your body, um, sounds like just torture to me. Yeah, yeah. I had one who was particularly active and it suddenly dawned on me that when I said to him, sit still and pay attention and do this, whatever the assignment was, his poor little brain was so busy focusing on don't move, don't move, don't move, <laughs> that there was no brain power left to do any of the, the assignment that was in front of him. So I agree with you. They're made to move. Um, and sometimes movement is just sitting in a rocking chair and moving back and forth, but movement is needed for sure. Yeah. And I'm a fidgeter, so I sympathize a lot with those kids because I, I absolutely, you've been in meetings with me. I don't sit still. I have to be playing with a pencil. I have to be doing something. I'm shaking my foot. I'm, you know, turning the pages. And it, I'm not trying to be obnoxious in a classroom or a meeting. I just, if I have to sit still, I have to concentrate so hard that I can't really listen. And yeah, yeah so when I had a kid like that, it did not really surprise me at all. Um, <laughs> But yeah, he had to move. We didn't have a rocking chair, but we had an exercise ball that he could sit mm -hmm. on at the table instead. Yes. And that worked wonders because he was just always balancing and, and using that body just enough that he could focus his brain on something else. Excellent idea. Well, I know one of the things that I often hear from new homeschooling parents is um, my state requires that we do PE. We need to do physical education. How in the world am I supposed to pull that off? I don't have gym equipment at home. I don't um, have a track for them to run on or a basketball court for them to play on. So what did you do with your kids for PE? That totally depended on how old my kids were and where we lived. Um, we moved several times. So sometimes we had a high school track that we could use and I could put the baby in a pack and walk a mile or two while somebody played soccer and the other one climbed the bleachers. Um, sometimes we didn't have that. Um, when we first moved to the town we live in now, we had a rec center where we could go and swim a couple of nights a week. And so I would just line them all up and pop them in the pool. And they owed me a certain number of laps before they could go in the playing section. And so we spent an hour or two just swimming back and forth, getting tired. Um, mm -hmm. So my, my answer to that for homeschool moms is, well, whatever you do, if you go hiking or if you walk your dog around the neighborhood, then that's what you do for PE. That's what your kids can do. If they yeah. want to do something new, if they're like, mom, I want to learn to play soccer. Great. Do that. But they can just do whatever it is you do to stay mm -hmm. active and be out in the world. Um, and that absolutely counts. And the benefit of that too is that you can do whatever it is you make them do. And so you are also getting exercise, which is just important, as important for homeschool moms as it is for the kids. Yes. 
And I think um, I live in a very um, wintry, snowy part of the country. And so when I was homeschooling my kids, we couldn't always get them outside. Mm -hmm. And so we had to look for inexpensive ways, short of buying a treadmill or a um, exercise cycle or whatever to accomplish PE inside. And I have some of these left over. We went to Walmart and bought these very inexpensive resistance bands. Some of them are in a circle. Some of them are just long bands. We have those, there, yeah. yeah, there's a multitude of exercises that you can do with these things that doesn't involve knocking over furniture or running through your house, um, but it still um, gives muscle exercise and it bumps that heart rate up and, and uh, fatigues and them now, just enough. So, you know, 15 years ago when we were homeschooling, that was a great idea. Now there's an app for that. Yeah. There's a resistance band app. Um, you yes. put in how many minutes you want to work and you put in what kind of band you have and it tracks it for you and tells you exactly what to do. So you can send a kid into another room with a resistance band and they come back sweaty. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, PE is important. Certainly yeah. most states require it, um, but it's not this big mountain that you have to climb. You yeah. can't figure out what you need to do. You don't need a book. You don't need... No. Um, a PE instructor. Um, you don't even need a plan. You can right. just do whatever it is you do. And, yeah. and if you need to track minutes or, or whatever for your state, absolutely do that. But yeah. I mean, it, it does not have to be complicated and it does not even have to be varied. If you are a hiking family, hike. We are a swimming family. So we swim. And when my kids swim all summer, it, when I had to track minutes or hours, I did that. But I know very well they get in a full credit worth um, from swimming all summer because it's hundreds of hours. Yeah. And if worse comes to worse, um, there's always push-ups and sit-ups. Yes, so you can certainly, in a very small space, even if you live in an apartment, um, you have enough room to generate some PE for your kids. So what about team sports? Did you have your kids play team sports or no? Is there value in that? What do you think? Uh, did I have my kids do team sports? Yes and no. Um, I have four kids. Three of them are team sport people. One of the three is reticent. Like he just isn't motivated by competition and um, peer pressure to compete and excel. That's just not him. Um, my two middle ones are extremely competitive athletes and are highly motivated by team sports. Um, one, we looked for 10 years and she ended up with karate, which was magnificent for her. Um, mm -hmm. Not really a team sport, but it was an organized sport. She went to class right. on certain nights. They put her through certain paces, um, worked really well, but she just didn't care about fighting for a ball or space or speed or anything like mm -hmm. that. So nice. I think there's a lot of value in it, um, unless there's not. Uh, for my two that don't care, they, they just aren't team sport people. That doesn't mean that activity is not important and that the, the workout part isn't important. It is, but the, the team part really didn't have a lot of value for them. Um, the other two have learned everything from, you know, drive and competition and, and discipline to handling disappointment and getting along with people you don't get along with and doing what you're told because the coach says, even when you don't really understand why, um, they understand when to pull back sass better than those other ones, mm -hmm. um, you know? And so I, I have loved team sports and I'm a, I'm a sport mom. And so I've loved the time that I've gotten to spend watching soccer and watching swim meets and, and doing all of that. So we've loved it as a family, but it is not for everyone. And that is okay. Mm -hmm. And we are one of those families that really didn't participate in team sports. We were more musically inclined as a family than we were sports inclined. Although I did have one who was involved in karate for a number of years. Um, and in all honesty, I don't believe that hindered my kids at all. In fact, one of my kids went on to play um, organized sports in college. So the lack of uh, team sports in our homeschool experience did not prevent him from playing organized sports in college. So 
Um, I agree with you. There's absolutely value, but it's not for everyone. And it's, and it's no great loss if you don't. Well, and if I could just plug music for a minute here, when we talk about team sports and we talk about the value of discipline and cooperation and learning to be on time and learning to be prepared and all of answering to somebody other than mom and using your brain in different ways than just sitting and writing in a workbook does for you, um, things like chorus and orchestra and band do this, accomplish the same things. You still yes. have to get along. You still have to be prepared. You still have to be on time. You still have to challenge yourself and accept disappointment and all of those things. Mm -hmm. It's not as sweaty, but if you've ever sat through an orchestra <laughs> performance <laughs> under all those lights, it's a little sweaty. Yes. Uh, so while some people think that, you know, because we don't do team sports, there is a lack. If you do team music, mm -hmm. you're getting all the same things done um yeah. and you never have to sit through it in the rain so there you go <laughs> that's a very good point point. and if you play a woodwind instrument you're still getting cardio so absolutely or brass there, or yes. drums or i mean yes. it's yeah it's very physical um yes. and so yeah just a little yeah. plug for music right there thank you for that so let's talk about the specific benefits of getting your kids moving. I mean, some people may be listening to this and saying, well, you're two veteran homeschool moms and you say movement is important, but who are you? And, and, and tell me specifically why I need to motivate my kid to put down the electronics and get up off the couch and move. So what would you, how would you answer that? Um, well, I would answer that by saying, who am I is I'm a boy mom, same as you. And if you've ever tried to homeschool a wiggly little urchin, you know very well the, um, the rule number one of raising all children, but specifically boys, a tired dog is a happy dog. And mm -hmm. if you've ever tried to fight your kid to sit and listen or do the math, or be careful with the handwriting, you know that it is much easier when they have walked the dog or run to the mailbox or played a little soccer or been swimming all morning and they're physically tired enough to focus their little brains on something mm. else. Yes. And not only are they settled in their attitude and ready to concentrate and work, but developmentally, Exercise is so good for us. It releases mm -hmm. all the good hormones. It sweats out all the um, sass and attitude. I'm sure your children never had sass and attitude. Never. <laughs> but um, I hear that happens to some people whose children yes. are angelic. Um, and it, it makes everything go more smoothly. And so particularly on those days when things aren't going smoothly, mm -hmm. I... I used to think of like, we'll go to the park if you do a good job, like exercise was a reward. And I learned that I was shooting myself in the foot mm -hmm. and that we had better days every day when we went to the park first. Yes, yeah. And physically, I mean, think of all the benefits there are with movement, especially for children. You are developing and increasing bone strength um, they're learning to control those muscles. The kids mm -hmm. that <clears throat> can't walk across the floor without tripping and falling over their own feet. Exercise is what yes. solves that. Yes. Exercise is what gives them balance and coordination. Yes. And um, it reduces anxiety and depression because of all of those good hormones you talked about. Which is huge right now in this crazy <clears throat> yes. year when we're all a little anxious. Yes. And weight control is huge yes. in kids these days. Yes. Um, you know, if they take in so many calories, they need to expend those calories. And yes. so physically, there are huge benefits. And you've alluded to this as well. Um, cognitively, there are enormous benefits. The biggest thing that exercise does or a moving child benefits from is help with focus. Yes. Um, like you said, they are more focused, they're more interested, they're more motivated if they have expended that energy first. Yeah. And they're less likely to wrestle with impulsive behaviors mm -hmm. if they have burned some of that energy. I agree. Um, and 
part of it too is that if they can challenge themselves to run fast or climb high or you know swim to the end or whatever it is you're doing um then they they get some of that competitiveness and some of that natural aggressiveness that is normal and and beneficial expressed yeah. and then they don't have to take it out on their math book or their sister <laughs> exactly exactly so, to say and nothing about are... heart health that yes. sets us up for a lifetime of of healthiness and you know movement when you learn yeah. to move and sweat and make your heart beat hard and fast as a kid that sticks with you yeah and I think too, kind of tied with this, nutrition goes along with this a little bit, um, which any parent of boys or girls um, <laughs> probably realizes that if your child's diet is full of sugar, yeah, um, then they're going to have an increased amount of energy that they need to burn off. And yeah. so sometimes I would find if I had a wiggly kid and, and we did our typical amount of exercise and that kid was still wiggly, I had to stop and think, what did you eat today? What was in your cereal bowl for breakfast? Or how many cookies did you have at lunch? And so sometimes those things go hand in hand. The oh, need yeah. for expending energy is tied to what goes into their little bodies. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's very helpful too. And I think, and maybe this is just a personal pet peeve of mine, but I think um, for younger children, Play and movement is learning. Yes. And so I think we're often in a huge rush to get them behind a workbook or sit them at a desk and at a very young age and be able to say, my five-year-old is doing X, Y, Z academically, mm -hmm. when really that five-year-old needs to play yes. and that five-year-old needs to move Yes. Um, because that's how they learn. Yes. They really I do. I had one that used to set up all the dinosaurs, the, you know, the plastic dinosaurs at the, we had a long hallway and he would set up all the plastic dinosaurs at the end of the hallway and then zoom matchbox cars down the alley and crash all the dinosaurs and then run down and fix them all and then come back and do it again. And I yeah. realized that uh, while some, we did need to get our work done, that was a, a worthy activity, you know? Um, I had another one who would set up all the little people you know, the little tiny little people and mm -hmm. walk all around the campfire or they go on a trek across, you know, Africa or the living room and mm -hmm. with the animals and all the people were matched to a different animal. And, and I mean, that turned out to be my writer because mm -hmm. the imagination and the storyline she had going, like I said, sometimes I needed to interrupt her, but I really tried hard not to when they were doing something worthy and creative and imaginative and or very active because that is just as valuable as curriculum yes absolutely. every time and so absolutely. you know and i would hear myself say things like put down that book we need to do school <laughs> really <I> mean, <laughs> what are you thinking mama exactly so, yeah I mean, like, we need to go home from the park on this first beautiful day of March when it's finally warm enough to be out here because we have school to do. I mean, yeah. yes, but no, no, right. no, go play, go play. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, uh, a play is vitally important, much more so than anything I could teach my child. Right. So. Yeah. And as in all things, balance is important. And so certainly we do have to do the academics, but like you said, um, how much better they learn if yeah. we get them up and get them moving. Yeah. So I had to laugh not long ago, um, one of my grandchildren was here and, and we were doing some schoolwork and he just could not sit still. And he just had all these things he had to say, <laughs> but none of the work on the table in front of him was getting done. And I felt my frustration rising and I thought, wait a minute, I know it's been a few years, <laughs> up out of the chair and so out the door grandma and grandson went and all we did was run around the house three times uh -huh. um, didn't have to be anything spectacular or pre-planned or whatever and we both came back in the front door huffing and puffing me more so than him <laughs> and uh, I was ready for a nap he was ready to sit down and, and focus yeah. and get his schoolwork done and it was done very quickly so Yep. I think there's just a valuable lesson there on top of all the things we've talked about. Um, 
really, I think the most valuable part of getting kids moving is my sanity or your sanity. Oh, yes. Yeah. Recently, my story from recently is um, we had a day that just school was not going well. So we went grocery shopping and I came home determined to finish it, you know, after the fact. And first I made my son, dear sweet boy, um, bring in all the groceries. Please unload the trunk while I go do something else. Um, mm -hmm. And so he back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with all the heavy load. And lo and behold, with no discussion and no threats and no bribery at the end, he was ready to sit and do something not active. Yes. So, yes. you know, sometimes you can Absolutely. like double duty, <laughs> do it, <to> work, <laughs> get some sweat on, then yes. we'll work. Absolutely. Well, this has been great, Jen. Thanks so much for um, sharing you. your insight on getting kids moving and hopefully uh, folks will find maybe a little tidbit here that will help them with getting their own kids moving. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed your time with us today.